Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, today we're heading back to a channel favorite. And believe it or not, I still have Salmonella videos that I have never seen. And I can't believe I've never seen this one. And it is Tuco Brahe. That happened Thursdays. All right, one of the things that I'm really fascinated in outside of history, although it pertains to history, is astronomy. And with Tuco Brahe, we got historically significant astronomical contributions to history. So, of course, I'm excited to interject with some historical commentary while, of course, learning about Tuco Brahe with you. All right, make sure you are supporting Sam. The original video link is down below. Make sure you've given it a like, subscription. And if you like what's going on here, want to see more commentary, love to have you as a sub as well. All right, let's do this. Hey, kids. Was he doing it back then? This is an old video, like six years. Hey kids, it's That Happened Thursday, so it's time to learn some history. Today's lesson is on the weirdest 16th Danish? century Danish astronomist that you'll ever meet. Okay, that isn't saying much, but trust me, he's an interesting guy. Meet Tycho Bra, or Brahe, or Broham, I don't really know, let me look it up. <laughs> Alright, apparently I was right the first time, it's Tycho Bra. Already you can- Now I've been told that it's Tuco. Tuco. Brahe, or bra, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of ways you pronounce it, but what is the Danish way? But I, I learned it was Tuko Brahe. Anyway, but yeah, he uh, got his support, or he was Danish. He got his support actually from the Danish um, king who um, allowed him a, a place to be able to uh, build an observatory. And he built probably the best observatory ever um, before really the kind of invention of modern telescopes. He's, he's kind of one of the last astronomers that wasn't using telescopes because um, after this, you're going to get Galileo and he builds, you know, a telescope to be able to do this. Um, but he also, uh, I think eventually like loses support from the king and then bounces around to try to get support. I think he goes to like Germany or Prague, stuff like that. Anyway, look at that mustache, by the way. That's awesome. You can see that something ain't quite right. He looks like Jamie Heinemann's gay cousin. Oh, so his claim to fame, among other things, is that he spent around 30 years collecting astronomical data with nothing yeah. but the naked eye, data that was later utilized by minds like Newton. However, if you, you think, think he just yep. sat... Wait, all those guys took from each other. Go back to Copernicus, and you're going you're gonna to get all these guys. You're going to get Kepler and Brahe and, uh, and, 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 yeah, and, and Galileo. All these guys built upon each other's work. That's kind of how it did, and that's part of the scientific revolution, which um, Tuco helps kind of kick off as well and is a part of um, that way. But yeah, his observatory, he uh, it did the most detailed observa uh, uh, tracking of sort of heavenly bodies that anybody had done before. Super intricate. Sat around staring at the sky all day like some kind of loser. Then you're way off base. First off, besides the whole astronomer thing, Tycho was an immensely prominent noble for a long period right, of his was, life. Yeah, it was to the point money. where he owned 1% of the entire wealth of Denmark at one point in the 1580s. Really? Today, I didn't people like Bernie always talk about the 1%. Bitch, I am the 1%. Oh dear, Sanders. I am somehow even more bold. Honestly, imagine a single <laughs> scientist. <laughs> To throw Bernie Sanders at that. This is six years old, but yeah, it's it's, it's great how he keeps coming around. But yeah, he was from a noble family, and it makes sense. I mean, guys like this that have this kind of influence and and over kings and to build observatories, they don't come from nowhere. Okay, they don't come from peasantry. I mean, shoot, it's still an age where there is peasantry and feudalism. Having that much money today, if you gave that kind of cash to Stephen Hawking, Hawking. he would probably turn into Skynet. Beyond being a stargazing fat cat, though, Tico is also just a. St <laughs> this is before Hawking died, right? Um, he just turned into Skynet. If you don't know Skynet, you got to get your Terminator history, okay? Basically, just a total integration with AI and robotics that eventually is just going to take over the world. That's the whole like Terminator universe. Yeah, that, that would, I guess that would make sense. Just, just fully integrate with it. World is going to be ruled by, um, <laughs> by, uh, by Stephen Hawking led robot armies. Straight up lunatic. That that still look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course. All right. Net. Beyond being a stargazing fat cat, though, Tico is also just a straight up lunatic. Here's a story. So he got into a little scrap in his college years, right? That ended up in a sword duel where he lost part of the tip of his nose. You think he would have oh, learned yeah, his lesson. Nose, but later on in his life, he somehow got himself into another sword duel, this time in the dark, 
and he lost the rest of his nose. Maybe that's where all the money came from, honestly. Just put, put out a bunch of nose insurance beforehand. Oh, it's already broken. I don't need the rest. <laughs> Get myself into another fight. So finally, he got himself fitted with a new brass prosthetic nose, which he wore for the rest of his life. I'd heard of, I didn't know about like the origin of it. I knew he had some kind of nose thing, but I knew nothing more about it. But he <laughs> chopped off. Oh, and he had to just go around. You think people were just like, you know, staring at him like, what, 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 what'd you say? What, what'd you say to, I'm not staring at your nose. It's good to nose you. I mean, know you. Uh, ugh. And then having a gold, the dude, that's just bad A. Eh? Have a golden one where it's like, yeah, I have a fake nose. And look, it's swagged. But that's just the tip of the crazy iceberg. Dog poop tastes just like people poop. What the? Tico, being fabulously well endowed, financially, get your mind out the gutter, one day decided to hire a dwarf for his court. Just to, you know, do dwarf things, I guess. The guy's name was Jep. You just had a dwarf. Tico, I did not know this. You just had a dwarf companion, like a mini me. But was in full belief that he could also tell the future. Up, oh, hold on. I'm uh, getting a vision. Hmm, oh, I see you giving more money to a little person. Oh, wow. Well, must have happened. Did you pay him? <laughs> Silly Jep. Did he pay him Damn. well? Seriously, though, imagine one of today's astronomists pulling something like this. So, Mr. D Dude, so yeah, he's got. He rolled around with a golden nose and a small little companion. It's like out of a movie. DeGrass Tyson, what discoveries have you made That's today? Tyson. I've discovered something about myself, Steve. Go. You discovered that Pluto should not be considered a planet, even though it wasn't a discovery. That's what he's probably going to go down for. I know he, Neil deGrasse Tyson wrote a bunch of other papers and stuff like that, but I think the whole declassifying Pluto as a planet is going to end up being his legacy as far as contributions to the astronomical field. Go on. I discovered something about myself, Steve. Go on. I, I want to own a dwarf. I want to call him Jeb and have him do dances for me and, like, be my footstool if I asked him nicely. <laughs> what the fuck, Neil? Yeah, also, seriously. he should be psychic. What truly takes the cake, though, <laughs> is Tico's pet elk. Yep, this walrus owned a caribou. Can't make that shit up. I know this so weird one day, stuff the too. next noble over wanted to borrow the elk to entertain guests at a party, right? So Tico sends the beast over what to the other party. guy's manor. At the party, the elk gets pissed drunk, climbs up a staircase, Ow! falls down it, and dies. And dies. Knowing Tico, he was probably okay. So they obviously got it drunk. They were like, "Hey, let's see, let's get a bowl of whatever. What did they say it was? Some alcohol, and get it drunk, and then let's see it just. Yeah, oh my god, what a party, dude! They rocked hard. You say scientists and nerds don't know how to party? Have you ever gotten an elk drunk and then watch it fall into bro dive and then die?" Literally rock stars back then. We just like, ah, oh, well, no more moose. I'll buy another one. Life goes on. So that's the story of Tico Bra. Remember, kids, <laughs> eccentricity can get you far in life, but dwarf owning can get you even farther. <laughs> I got a bunch to add about Tico Brahe's um, uh, astronomy that he didn't even touch any of the astronomy. So stay tuned. I'm going to share with it right now after this shot. Not good. Okay, so now let me combine uh, the funny backstory to Tuco Brahe with the actual astronomer <laughs> Tuco Brahe, because he didn't talk about any of his contributions. So um, I guess one thing he did say is about the observatory. Yeah, he he uh, was able to because his family again was very uh, powerful. Pretty much uh, get he got land from the king of Denmark. I want to say it was like an island even or something. I, I don't remember. Maybe, maybe it was an island, but anyway, a place where he built this observatory and spent like they said there decades charting the movement of things. And this was all to kind of build upon and still try to understand what the model of the solar system is, especially about movement. What is moving around? What right? Because Copernicus, you know, hypothesized about a heliocentric or sun-centered um, system, but Tuco wasn't really buying into it completely. 
Um, what he actually, his model was this. Um, it's that the earth is still the center, okay? Um, because he thought that the earth was too, like, heavy to be able to, like, move around. But anyway, so the moon and the sun go around the earth. However, everything else, like the other planets, go around the sun. So imagine sun-centered, moon goes around it, so does the sun, but everything else goes around the sun while the sun is going around the earth. Now we know that's not true, but you do still see an element of heliocentrism. I think they call it like geoheliocentrism or something like that. Um, but yeah, um, another thing I know he discovered, he discovered a, a supernova he saw because he was charting, you know, stars and stuff so much that he, you know, uh, uh, saw a supernova basically and just thinking like a new star appears, which is going to, you know, provide so many other questions about how that kind of thing happens. And I believe also one thing he was, uh, uh, I think, known for was calculating distances of stars and basically conclusion that they are way further than what people think that the you know the the stars aren't you know local other stars aren't local at all they're you know i think he said like hundreds of times further away than what had been talked about uh or what had been thought of before so you can see we're not fully with with brahe's at a full accurate understanding of the solar system but all these guys again like going from copernicus to kepler to brahe to galileo and etc um newton uh, these guys all are adding a piece to the puzzle until it finally gets you know kind of solidified and galileo is one that's definitely going to confirm things because like i said earlier in the video galileo was the first of these guys to really have a telescope these guys had just been kind of charting things and it was very very mathematical although galileo's will as well but um being able to have the observable evidence was kind of the nail in the coffin for heliocentrism. And with Brahe, by the way, it his ideas still, I, I from what I understand, still kind of played nice with Catholic doctrine because during all this stuff, Catholic, do Catholic doctrine was still saying, you know, that the earth is the center. So this, in a way, with Brahe kind of hit both, where it's like, well, the earth is the center, but stuff is going around the sun, which I guess can make it a little bit more safe to be an astronomer at this time period. Of course, we know Galileo, he's the one who pays the price for that, is he's gonna have to publicly recant his um, ideas about heliocentrism, and of course, spend the rest of his life in house arrest. Um, but anyway, each of these guys add a piece of the puzzle with scientific history, and there we go. So anyways, hopefully you're able to learn something about Brahe here, as well as get the backstory of this weird, I had no idea his life was that weird. That is interesting. This dude was like a rock star. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for Salmonella making this awesome video. I'm hoping that he comes back even more. He made a video like a few months ago but uh, has taken his time again. Hopefully he's all well. And keep liking his videos. The original uh, video link is down below. Make sure you go to that. Hopefully you watch that first. Um, but uh, being able to support that lets him know that, of course, we want to see more videos from him. All right. And with that, we will see you all next time. Bye.